to meet you and see you. Hello, you Hello. Pain. <laughs> Yeah. First of all, please tell me a little bit about yourself uh, for our viewers. Where do you live? What do you do, etc. I live in um, Twickenham, which is a part of West London in England. And um, I'm a photographer, although over the last year, I haven't really been much of a photographer. Over the last year, I've mainly been working on my archive, scanning, rescanning, and um, smartening my old photographs up. I hope to go back to being a photographer, but that remains to be seen. Tell me, please, how did photography come into your life? Well, um, in the I, in the seventies, I was an advertising agency art director. Uh, it was a job I loved, and um, in 73, in 73, I was working in a little advertising agency in Camden Town, North London, and we had the Miranda and Minolta camera account. My boss said to me one day that uh, I should take one of the cameras home with me and practice um, on it and see if it would help me produce better ads. And therefore, I started to go about with the uh, camera I took it everywhere with me for a bit and I used to go to a lot of gigs. Uh, one gig um, I went to was um, quite a famous uh, gig of um, Eric Clapton, Pete Townsend, Steve Winwood played together at the Rainbow Theatre. And I went there with my girlfriend, who's now my wife, and um, we were right at the very back. You know, we were in the last row at the back and the people at the front were tiny. And um, I thought to myself, well, I've got a camera. I could go down the front and pretend to be a photographer, which I did. So I left my girlfriend sitting where she was. It wasn't very chivalrous of me, I must admit. Uh, I didn't think about that at the time. I just went down the front, hopped over into the pit where I'm not even sure if there was any other photographers. I think there might have been one or two. And... Um, I started taking photographs. I had a one or two rolls of color film with me and I, I used those. And when I got the photographs processed, they weren't very good, but they weren't that bad. And I thought, well, maybe I could do this a bit more. And gradually as an amateur, I started to photograph other gigs. That was really how I started. Thank you. Derek, most of your uh, photos reflect some side of life hidden from common eyes. Please tell me what ideas are behind your photos? What emotions do you put into them? Well, to begin with, there wasn't any emotion at all. Um, mm. Although I came to realize in, in the years since, maybe there was. <clears throat> to begin with, I was just interested in photographing the bands and round about 76, 77, the audience at these shows, became more interesting than the band. So I turned around and started to photograph the, the um, audience. And to begin with, it was really just me recording the people I saw around me. I didn't feel that there was um, any emotion there. But in the years since, since people have been more interested in that work that I was doing when I was still an amateur, I've come to realize really I was photographing young people that were like the people I wanted to be, really. That was it. You know, uh, looking at your photographs, it seems that uh, each portrait conveys uh, the whole essence of the character and his environment. How do you manage uh, to capture such convincing and truthful images? Well, there's two, two secrets to this, okay. uh, I think. The first part is to keep myself and my opinions 
out of the equation completely. I, I basically, I just try and point the camera at the person. I'm, I'm polite, but I don't explain much. I try to explain the bare minimum. I just ask them if I can take a photograph of them. If they don't ask me anymore, I keep quiet. So, and I keep my own personality and um, what I feel totally out of it. And the other part is the editing. I go through the pictures I take and I pick the ones that seem to work and reject the ones that don't seem to work. It's quite simple. No more um, mystique to it than that, really, to be honest. Okay. Usually it varies in formal use, as well as many subcultures. Uh, which of them do you remember the most? I remember the skinheads more than anything oh. else, partly because um, it was a very strange time. Um, and they were, some of them were very dangerous people. So I remember that aspect. Uh, but the, the other reason why I remember them more than others is because people ask me about them more. There were less people photographing the skinheads than for instance, photographing the punks that overlap with the skinheads and also the new romantics. There was always a lot of photographers around punk gigs and new romantic clubs so much less people photographing the skin it's very few in fact really gavin watson was one um, ian mckell nick knight mm. uh, not a great number you have published uh, quite a few books with your photographs of course it interested me what uh, do these books mean uh, to you is it uh, the end of a project research on a specific topic or something else well, um, really before I was a photographer myself, I had books of, about photography and I felt that throughout the time I was a professional photographer, I became a professional photographer in 82 and I was working almost full time really until 2005. Um, after which uh, things changed slightly, but I can that come on to that later. Um, yeah, for the time I suppose I had 25 years of uh, as a professional photographer photographing bands and working editorially and I, I, I wanted to do a book because it just gives photographers some legitimacy. After the newspapers become fish and chip paper and the magazines uh, go mouldy and fall apart, books are, are still there. So it does give you some legitimacy and some permanence hopefully although you know most of my books are now out of print eric tell me about the cameras you shoot with what camera did you start your career with what do you use now um i started um with the minolta or, or miranda but that was really a borrowed camera that was in 73 and Probably by 74, 75, I got the sack from that particular agency and I bought a secondhand Nikomat in, yeah, probably round about 75. And I used that for really three or four years. It was the only camera I had. I only had one lens. And then um, when punk happened and I found that I was very often in tiny clubs, and I was surrounded by people, I couldn't really get enough people into a standard lens. So I bought a 24 millimeter lens and for the next uh, couple of years, I was using the Nikomat with two lenses and then around about, um, I suppose 79, 80, I bought a, a small Nikon. I think it was the FM. I, I Really, I suppose I'd have to check that the FM was around then, but for most of the 80s, I was using the, the Nikon FM for my um, club work, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. I also used a flash at that point. It was a tiny flash. It was, wasn't automatic. It, was, it just put out the same thing all the time. And I had it mounted upside down on a coat hanger. So it was very close to the lens so that the shadows would be small. Uh, but the thing was, it, because it wasn't automatic, it put out the same amount of light all the time, apart from when it was recycling. 
and it's the that, that flash always took about 30 seconds to recycle 15 20 25 30 seconds so all my exposures were different i i wouldn't wait for it to fully charge i take one and then a second later i take another one so the, the exposures were like this the whole time some were very thin uh, but as i say i was an amateur and i was particularly amateurish in my the way i went around my job as well really hmm. nothing to write home about my technique then or really now to be honest i've always had a kind of um, hit and miss technique Derek, uh, do you think uh, photography can change uh, something in the world or is it a tool to draw attention to a topic or a problem? Oh, yes. No, I think um, photography can definitely change the world, um, really. Yeah. George Floyd, for instance, I know that was not still photography, but the, the woman that uh, did the video of George Floyd getting beaten up that changed everything okay. oh the, the 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 little girl that got napalmed during the vietnam war photographs like that it changed the world do you try change the world with your photographs no i don't actually because i don't feel i have any legitimacy or any any reason to do that you know i think um i want my photographs to speak for themselves really all of them and if there's anything that resonates with somebody from one of my photographs fine but um that's up to the photograph or the, or the, the viewer it's really got nothing to do with me i mean really i would prefer to keep myself out of it really i just want to be i want to go around the world with a, like a, a empty frame and just hold the frame up so that people can see what i see if they're interested, fine. If they're not interested, that's also fine. So I don't have any hidden agenda or special agenda. Okay. And the last question, uh, Derek, what advice would you give to young photographers looking to become professional in the future? Well, I always tend not to try to give anybody advice because I just don't think it's very useful. Uh, and even more so nowadays, because the thing is, I'm 70 and young people that are just starting to study um, photography now, they're teenagers very often in their mid to late teens, early 20s. And there's just absolutely no comparison between what's going on now with very few magazines and magazines that don't pay photographers to what it was like when I was starting. When I started, people could be a photographer if they had a camera. They would, you could, it was relatively easy to find somebody to give you money to go and take photographs. I didn't find it difficult at all to start. I mean, the first um, few photos I took of punks, I had maybe 30 good photos. They weren't really good, but I thought they were good at the time and I had those in a show at the ICA you know which is quite a prestigious gallery in London and um, I was just a beginner I didn't know anything and it was relatively easy in those days now I think it's extremely hard everyone wants to be a photographer everyone really is a photographer uh, so I'm not saying everything was better then I think for imagery everything's better now but it's just very very hard to become a photographer and uh, give people advice but since you've asked me i think i do have two general um pieces of advice uh, which suits photography but it also suits everything else as well i think you have to have a unique selling proposition there has to be something about what you do which makes people come to you rather than go to anybody else if you're doing the same kind of photographs as a thousand other people why should people come to you you've got to find something about what you offer which is different and then they'll people will find look for you the other thing is talent isn't so important i don't think as commitment you have to have commitment you have to stick to your guns and really stick to it and if you hang about long enough you'll get there that's 
you know, the key thing. There's lots of photographers around who do very well, become very successful, but don't really have all that much talent, basic pictorial talent, in my opinion. But if they've got the commitment, um, that's that's really the important thing rather than pure talent. Thank Those you. are my two bits of advice. <laughs>